This is my 51st year serving my community and ending incarceration and detention has always, always been on my agenda. And as it has been indigenous rights as I've lived most of my time in New Mexico, where I was conceived and where my, I have family. I want to talk to you for this moment, it was suggested, about what is happening in Gaza, in Gaza, because the experiences that you have heard are, have been happening for the last 75 years. Detention and criminalization of people is what every Palestinian has experienced from generation to generation. Their identities have been criminalized. And a lot of the technology, drones, surveillance system, crowd control, placing people in and denying them basic health care, and crowding that you cannot believe in refugee camps from generation to generation where people live on top of each other in streets that are this wide. And literally, if you're carrying your laundry, trying to get home, and someone else is carrying their laundry, somebody has to back up because there's literally no room to get through. This is very hard for me to say in light of the terrible massacre of 1,400 Jewish people along the southern border and the hostages that were taken. And even as I hold that sorrow, the root causes of colonialism can be seen in the absolute genocide of Palestinian people, withholding water, withholding food, withholding fuel, so that people are basically starving to death, dying of thirst, and on top of that, the United States has provided enough ordnance and bombs, more than were dropped on Afghanistan. And people have, there is no safety. There is nowhere to go. And <laughs> nobody wants Palestinians. And they are being left to die in the street without shelter, without anything. I heard from Lam a heartbreaking story of what it is like to grow up in war and to literally only have a tiny toe of your child that you cannot dig out from the rubble. This is happening now as we speak, as we give witness to this cruel and heartless system the other side of the world, which seems so very far away, are actually connected. They're connected so tightly because our government refuses to see certain people as human beings and the end result is genocide. Whether it's in small doses, day by day, or as we're seeing now, the complete forced depopulation and destruction. From New Mexico, you know, you can see that people have come back and forth along this great Turtle Island from the Southlands to, north, to the Northlands for thousands and thousands of years. Great big macaw feathers are pictured on, for instance, the, uh, the Pueblos and on the, head, on the regalia of indigenous people who still have held on to their dances. And when you come and visit Nuevo Mexico, when you come and see New Mexico, 
you will see a people that has absolutely refused to give up their identity. As my people, even in the face of genocide of World War II, we are still standing here. So you can imagine that my heart is shattered in a million pieces to see what the state of Israel is doing to another people and to people here through technology and militarism. This must stop. We stand together. We are human beings. We say much more than ceasefire, much more than a humanitarian corridor, we say end this militarism. We have to create communities that can thrive. We have the vision of what life can look like, and we will create it wherever we live. In spite of all this brutality, we refuse to give up our dream of a humanity that loves each other, of the beloved community. This is my prayer, that we stay smooth, as Palestinians say, that we remain steadfast, and that we support each other through all the trauma, and that we find our brilliance, our joy, our creativity, our fire, our power of resistance. Together, we will transform the world. If not in this generation, then we will continue to plant seeds until the world looks like the vision on these posters, a world which is healed. Thank you.